Hi, I'm Ben Tyner. And I'm Tony Wood. We're with Tyner Commercial Real Estate Services. And today we're going to be discussing how to get an accurate value on your commercial property to sell it, and also what things you might want to do with your property prior to selling it to prepare for the sale. For decades, I've been involved with the valuation of commercial real estate throughout the Western United States, from real estate owned by lenders, commercial leased investments, and owner-user properties. And I've seen many different approaches, of course, working with many appraisers and seeing what their approaches were. And I've come to the realization that establishing fair market value has a very consistent process. And if you take that process, you can come up with a very good evaluation of the subject property with accurate numbers to reflect the current market value of that property. Additionally, after you do the financial valuation of the property, from time to time there'll be things that can be done to really enhance the property saleability. We'll talk a bit about that today as well. I'm a very strong proponent that a broker should be bringing a client very thorough analysis of their property when working with them to prepare the property for sale and making a determination of that property's fair market value. We take a very pragmatic approach to that that begins with a review of the property's improvements, location, and how it fits in the competitive nature of real estate in its marketplace. Once we've done that, we take a closer look at the financial statistics of the property, if, if applicable. If it's an owner-user property, obviously, we take a look at the way the property performs as an investment from a pro forma position. If it is a leased investment or a property that is an income property with existing tenants, we do an evaluation of the rent roll, the current rents as they reflect market, and the expenses, how it's managed, and, and, and get these numbers to a place that are fair and reasonable, yet shed the best light possible from an investment perspective on the property to make sure that value is fully realized. Then we go through a series of searches and research on both lease comparables and sales comparables to see how each, it, when we're looking at the income and, and the tenants in the property and their credit standing, and the size of the units, and how those rents are reflected in the marketplace to see can we show this income and possibly also pro forma a better, higher return with market rents? Um, also, if you have a building with national credit tenants, such as a retail center with major national credit tenants in there, that's really going to impact how you apply a cap rate versus if you have a center or an office building or an industrial building with tenants that are more regional and local business owners. That will also directly impact how you apply cap rates with your comparable sales to the valuation of the property. Different components of value would include your property's location, the construction material that was used, the way it was constructed, and the age of your property, as well as your tenant mix. Those are all very good points. There are so many components to be taken into consideration when you're doing these market evaluations on a property and marketing plans for the property. So when the marketing valuation is complete, you've got an executive summary bringing in description of the property, a highlight of the lease and sales comparables, a recommendation of price and range of anticipated final sales price, some information on what the marketing plan would be for the property, and hopefully some background on your, your brokers and why they are best suited to be the choice to market that property. Now, marketing plans are really critical to your marketing proposal because that is essentially what is going to assure your property has maximum exposure in the marketplace and you are reaching out to the appropriate client whether it be an owner, user, or investor for that particular property. That's a great point, Tony. And considering who you're marketing to is actually one of the very first and important steps to take. If this is a uh, owner, user type of a property where 
that would attract the highest value. Uh, that's definitely what you want to consider. And what type of owner user would find this more attractive than another type of an owner user? For example, if it's industrial and it has refrigeration in it, uh, it's definitely going to be much more valuable to somebody who would distribute dairy or something that would need to be refrigerated as opposed to someone who would be repairing cars. So you would look at what are the features of this property and to whom and to what business would this specifically help uh, or type of an investor depending on what type of a property you had and really target your market your, and your marketing strategies down to these type of users or investors. And then certainly once you've made that determination you go through a protocol of formulating the lists and creating the prospects to reach out to directly as a broker. This is really a, an important component of your marketing plan. Uh, not to mention uh, broker cooperation. We fully cooperate with brokers and we really encourage other brokers to keep that in a marketing, any marketing effort that you do on a property. Many times there's some old uh, kind of approaches to marketing commercial property that has to do with the broker keeping control and keeping it proprietary and really making it essentially much more difficult for any other broker to possibly insert their buyer into that situation. I think it's critical for clients, owners, to reach out to their prospective brokers and ask them the question, do you fully cooperate with other brokers if they have a buyer for my property? How do you do that? How is it marketed? How is it exposed to the marketplace beyond just your own uh, core group of investors or clients that you might have? These are things that need to be considered and looked at when you're going through the choice of a, of a broker. I also ask, where are you marketing? And often, uh, if someone just says the internet, it's pretty wide open. And I look at marketing much like fishing. The more hooks that you have in the water with, that are properly baited, of course. But the more hooks you have in the water, the better chance you have of catching the fish. And speaking of hooks, what's the bait? Your marketing package is a critical part of the entire package of marketing a property. And I'm surprised how many times still today I'll call about a property and ask, uh, could you send me over the brochure or the flyer? And, and they don't have one. Uh, I've literally had brokers go, I just don't do that. <laughs> but I'm happy to tell you anything you need to know, and they might send you a couple of pictures. That just is not a way to effectively market a property. No. A professional flyer uh, and brochure and marketing package can actually really help the desirability of your property when it's first presented and that first impression does mean a lot. Everything from nice professional photography on the front, aerial maps showing what businesses and uh, what streets are nearby, what's uh, accessible depending on its context, if it's an office, um, if there's, there's public just so many ways right, really, exactly. to do it depending on the property. But showing it, the demographics. And highlighting the benefits of that right. property and how it fits in the marketplace uh, to really uh, uh, enforce the value you're asking and encourage buyers to be interested in the property. Something we didn't talk about in this video, and we should probably visit that in another one, is exit strategies. You may be looking as an investor, obviously, you might be looking at a 1031 tax deferred exchange. If you're an owner user and you're selling but you're not purchasing another property, there are tax considerations and other issues you'd want to look at too before you make the final decision to go forward with the sale. So once you have considered your property's location, the features that your property has that's unique and valuable, and what your property values compared to the rest of the market, and you have a great marketing package, you can take this out and feel confident when you receive offers that you're getting the strongest offers for your property. Remember, if you're thinking of selling your commercial real estate, it's an important process to be fully informed. Insist on full-blown marketing proposals and valuations before you make a decision. Make sure that these valuations of your property include all the elements that I've discussed today to really assure that your property is being properly evaluated and that the price that you're going to be asking is the highest and best possible price and you have the best possible marketing approach to that, obtaining that price. Thank you for watching and please subscribe below 
for our future videos. Also, feel free to send us your questions and we will work on creating videos to answer your questions in the future. Our website is filled with lots of resources, articles, and assistance to people looking to buy, sell, or lease commercial real estate. So please check it out, tinercommercial.com. Thanks.